10 tips to immediately improve in Warzone 4. The game is launched and we're ready to go, but we need to make sure we have everything in order to be successful. So here are your 10 tips. Get that done. Tip number one, let's change some basic settings that you would think are already set up, but they're not. Here is the problem. Call of Duty thought it would be a good idea, and I understand the thought process of, hey, multiplayer, zombies, Warzone, why do I have to keep changing loadouts in my settings per game? That sounds good. Let's not do that and let's put a universal settings in. Actually, that is a pain because let me tell you a few reasons why. Guns hit differently in Warzone than they do multiplayer, than they do zombies. Everything interacts different. The values that when I hit to the head, the chest, the feet, on the arms, everything is different across all different platforms. So once you've changed it in multiplayer, it changes in Warzone and Zombies. So you don't want the same settings set up for Warzone that you do in multiplayer. So here are some basic settings that you're gonna wanna change first. So tip number one, basic settings. You wanna go to controller, then you're gonna go over to combat and then combat advanced settings. Make sure there's a couple things in here you wanna do. Weapon mount exit is gonna be instant. Make sure that's changed. Interact reload behavior, tap to interact. Now this is a huge one and this one is new in here for this season, sprint cancels reload. So you want that off because when you're sprinting, you don't want it to cancel your reload. You want to be able to reload and run at the same time. Then back up into combat and make sure you are under armor plate behavior, apply all. I know this seems very basic and that's why I said tip number one is basic settings. But for some reason, this was changed to apply one. Make sure in your settings, it is applied all. Tip number two, aim assist. One, I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, we're gonna go on a tangent about aim assist and it's gonna be mouse and keyboard versus aim assist. And no, 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 that's not what we're doing. We just wanna make sure the dang thing is on. So target aim assist on, ADS aim assist on. I know that's for campaign and zombies, but let's just make sure we turn it on. And then go to aiming advanced settings. Here's the change. They have changed this to standard once you load into Warzone 4. It should be dynamic. That is gonna be the best aim assist settings you can use on controller. Sorry, mouse and keyboard players. I know you don't have this, but for us controller players, make sure this is dynamic, not your standard in settings. Hey guys, it's been brought to my attention that some of you have not hit that subscribe button yet. We gotta fix that. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications because I have videos coming out every day, five days a week for you, so you can get better at Warzone and you can also understand what's coming in the future of COD. All right, let's get back to these tips. Tip number three, you're gonna go to FOV. You might've noticed this was changed on yours. Go to graphics and then you're gonna go to view and then you're gonna go and change this. Mine was set to 90 and affected. Keep in mind, whatever your multiplayer FOV is going to be your Warzone FOV. Again, pain in the butt, but that's not what you want. You want 110, and you want 110 in Warzone because what this does is you can see to the right, your hitbox makes it bigger and easier to see on screen. You get more real estate. You don't want to go 120. I go 110 to 115. 120 seems a little bit much, and 110 makes it right enough because if you think of a player avatar, the hitbox gets bigger because the avatar or the operator is bigger in your sights. So then you get more aim assist when you're aiming down at your operator. So make sure your field of view is 110, not your multiplayer or zombies FOV. In multiplayer, 90, 100, 80, totally fine. Warzone, four, and area 99, 110. Tip number four, graphic and NVIDIA settings. For some reason, when I loaded in today, it was under NVIDIA DLSS. You don't want that. The reason why you don't want that, yes, it gives you more frames, which is great, but it also creates very hazy and fuzzy environment and hazy and fuzzy operators to see on the map. You don't want hazy and fuzzy, you want clear and concise. So Fidelity FX Cast, I can't preach it high enough. And then go ahead and hit the X button and go to your cast strength. Now my computer is a 4090, so I can handle 100%. If yours isn't in the 40 series, I recommend 80% to 85%. Um, if you have like a 3090, you can go 85 to 90, um, but anything like 3060, 3070, you're gonna go to 85 to 90, but turn that off and put on Fidelity FX Cast, FX Strength. Make sure your NVIDIA DLSS frame generation is off as well. These two here will help you, give you a clearer picture of the game and make it easier for you to see enemies in the game. Let's talk about building loadouts. So for tip number five, building your loadout. It is all changed, guys. Let's go in, I'll use the sniper rifle as an example here. 
So when I'm in the gunsmith, there is a new way to look at details. If you hit your right trigger, you get your toggle details here and you can see everything about everything. And it's a more of a detailed view. They added the damage distribution chart, which is huge now. We can go ahead and see that like snipers are all one shot headshot. You see 300 to the head. That means it's one shot headshot. But what I really like here and I want you guys to focus on is it stays up as I go into each one. So if I go into the muzzle here and I go to suppressor, you see nothing changes. But then if I go to compensator, you're going to see I'm going to get better recoil gun kick and vertical recoil control. As you go through, you're gonna see the changes and it doesn't leave the screen, I love that. So go in your barrels and figure out, hey, what do I need? Maybe I need more bu bullet velocity because I have a sniper. So I threw on the gain twist barrel because look, if I don't have that barrel on, it, I'm at 10, 12 bullet velocity. If I add that on, I'm at 12, 14. You can keep going down the way and see light, lightweight pad, nothing changes. But you're like, wait, 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 what do you mean nothing changes? Nothing changes because aiming idle sway is not on the chart. So you gotta be aware of that. Aiming idle sway with the lightweight pad really helps it so you don't kind of have this sway back and forth like swaddling a baby. You wanna aim and be done. So that is not on the chart, so be aware of that. But damage distribution chart when you're building your loadout now is key. Hit the right trigger, kind of go through all of it and find out what is good, what is bad, what's gonna help you and what's gonna hurt you. Tip number six, wild cards. That's right, we have wild cards inside Warzone now. So understand them, read them, figure out what's best for you. But there is four main ones. The majority of the people playing Warzone or the casual player is going to use overkill. That means you get two primary weapons or two secondary weapons. But there are other ones in here like Bandolier gives you a munitions satchel to get you more munitions. Gunfighter, you get extra three attachments on Black Ops 6 weapons only, so five to eight. Battle Ready is super interesting. Your loadout provides a UAV and a utility box. I highly recommend staying with Overkill to keep things consistent, but feel free to play with these and what is your gaming style? What is your, if you're a more of aggressive player, maybe you want Gunfighter. If you're more, if you're playing in quads, maybe you want Battle Ready. Uh, but the majority of people will be picking overkill and need to be picking overkill. That leads me into tip number seven, which is make an SMG in your primary slot as a loadout. Why would you do that? Well, because when you go to the buy station and you buy weapons, if you remember in Warzone 2 when we had this, you can now just buy your SMG. If it's not in your primary slot, you don't see it. And this makes it helpful. So if I'm going to run a different perk, I can go down in here and go to my wildcard perk and maybe I want gunfighter, which is great. Cause so then if I want gunfighter in that slot, I can go in and it gives me eight attachments to use for that C9. So I can build this loadout differently. And um, if I have my AR, I can do it for my AR. I don't have to run overkill. It gives me more options. Maybe I want to run battle ready. So when I do get my loadout, I will also get a UAV and a utility box. So I get three for the price of one. Think about when you're adding in the money. If maybe you're in duos and it's 10,000 for a loadout. Well, really it's 10,000 for a loadout, 6,000 for a UAV and 2,500 for a utility box. But I'm getting all of that at $10,000 price instead of 18,500. So that saves me money and economy. And it also saves me a spot for not using overkill. So I can just buy my SMG at the buy station. Tip number eight, perks, perks, and more perks. And I'll be doing another video on this um, here shortly about which perks to use and what are best. Obviously the game has been out for maybe 12 hours, um, but I've been playing all day. Here's a couple things on perks. Understand there are a lot. There's 18 perks plus loot two extra lootable perks that are in the game plus specialists. Here's my best advice with perks. Go ahead, understand them. Here's what's best for unlock so far. Dexterity is like Mountaineer before, so it reduces weapon motion while jumping, sliding, and diving, and then you take less fall damage. This is really good for Tim the Tapman. Then go ahead and do, I do Sprinter because I like unlimited tax sprint. That is new with this, but go ahead and look. Quick Fix is still here. Cold blooded tracker bomb squad which is eod stuff like that i so far i'm really enjoying sprinter because i like to run and gun i like being able to come around corners unlimited tax sprint then alertness this one is really hard to choose because you have tempered and alertness and ghost they're all put in here and gun ho so far i'm enjoying alertness 
uh, on the small map. I'd probably use tempered on the big map, but just know your perks. Understand there are different perks out there mixed in with your wild card perk as well. But so far I would recommend dexterity, sprinter, alertness. Tip number nine, firing range and the recoil wall. Maybe you haven't seen this yet, but I'm so glad that they actually put it in this year. But if you toggle up, if you see at the bottom down here, if I hit down, I'm gonna get a recoil person. If I hit again, I get a recoil wall. So you can go ahead, build your loadout and then aim. And then I'm not gonna do anything on my controller. Like you're gonna see here, nothing on my controller. I'm just gonna go ahead and edit and then go ahead and fire and then look. So that's my recoil. So now I need to understand, is that going to be something I can manage? It goes straight up and a little, little, little bit to the right, but then straight up on this Model L. So if I do it again, can I control it? Do I feel comfortable? It is a little wonky. It is a little bit more pushing down on that right stick. So maybe I wanna add something else for recoil here. And what I really like here, if I hit down again, it goes up and then I go again, bring it back down and look, it's cleared. So then I can go ahead and maybe, you know, my strider here, there's like no recoil on my pistol. So if like, if I'm barely touch, if I'm touching it, there's nothing here, which is great. And then I can go back over to here and do this and then understand, hey, the recoil wall is great. If you haven't used it yet when you're building your loadout, this is going to be key to help you with recoil control in the new Warzone 4. Tip number 10, and it's probably the one of the most annoying things I experienced today and probably one of the most annoying things you've experienced so far is loadout drop comes at the third circle. I don't know who thought about this. This is very frustrating. So the tip here is you're going to have to really depend on a cash and economy. You're going to want to make sure you know your money and how much you're going to need for loadouts because there's going to be a lot of teams with no loadouts until that third circle, especially if you're running um, not overkill and you want to buy guns for 2,500, you can do that. Just make sure you understand that loadout now comes in third circle. It's not first and fifth, it's third circle, which adds a different dynamic to the game and puts more pressure on economy. So if you're in quads, prioritize it quick. I noticed today in duos and solos, it was a little bit slower to get loadout when I was trying to get economy. So make sure that is something that you are going after. And hey guys, I appreciate you watching the video. And if you like more videos like this, why don't you click or touch the screen now and check out my video here comparing Black Ops 1 to Black Ops 6 because it is insanely different. Thanks again, guys.